Welcome back guys. In this video tutorial we'll be talking about the pregnancy test kit. Okay, so how the pregnancy test kit actually works that we use in home to test pregnancy. Now normally uh, the pregnancy test kit that is used for mammals you can test it for actually it is made for human being except for that it can be tested for other mammals because the foundation uh, principle uh, on which the pregnancy test kit actually works is uh, the release of a hormone with the urine and that hormone is termed as human chorionic gonadotrophin human chorionic gonadotrophin So this is the hormone, it is termed as HCG. Now the presence of HCG hormone in urine indicates confirmation in pregnancy. Now normally what happens during the process of development of an embryo, what happens during the after the fertilization is done. There are sequential stages. Egg is being made, then sperm is getting inserted and fertilizing the egg. Now once the fertilization is done, the egg is now producing the zygote, it should be implanted into the endometrium. Now once the placenta is being implanted in that endometrium, in the wall of this, uh, wall of this uh, endometrium or uterus wall, in that time, after the implantation of that egg onto the wall of uterus, it starts secreting HCG hormone. Now in that particular time, the HCG hormone, there are different variety of HCG hormone, alpha HCG, beta HCG and different versions. Now the presence of HCG in blood is determined from the first day of the implantation but after the second day of implantation normally after the second day of implantation the concentration of HCG start to increase in urine right so it's very easy to test urine out you don't need to take blood out or anything you can do it in the home so normally there are kit avail available now that kit is designed to detect the presence of HCG hormone in urine now normally uh, the concentration of HCG is highest in urine one is the concentrated form which is always uh, in the morning the first urination concentration of all the proteins and hormones and other materials are there highest in the urine that's why all the urine taste uh, works in the morning so in that case you need to take it and put it into the stripe there is a region in the strip of those kit and then uh, capillary action will draw the urine out and then ultimately there are three important sections in that strip that is helping to determine whether uh, it is suggesting the positive result or the negative result. Now if we draw the test kit in this case, it will look something like this. So I am drawing this kit uh, schematically. Normally two important situations are there. One is uh, test is positive, another one is negative. So we will be seeing both of the situations. So there is a place for placing that urine, so placing the sample. So sample in, in this place, right, so sample in this region. After that there are three important sections. One is this uh, reaction center or R region. Another region for example let's say uh, the test cent center. So let's say this is the test center and this is the control. And in this case also reaction test and control. These are the three different regions placed in this strip. Actually four. One is the place for adding the sample. Another three region. One is for reaction. T is for test. C is for control. So let me write. R for here reaction. T for test. C for control. Now what we are doing in this case. In the R region. In the R region, what is there? We actually use antibody. We, we add antibody into the strip to detect the presence of hormone. So normally, antibody is produced against HCG in mouse. So those antibodies are termed as anti-HCG antibody. So we are having many anti-HCG antibodies. Now this anti-HCG antibody can bind with HCG or human chorionic gonadotrophin. So if, if I draw the antibody it will look like this, right? It can bind with HCG hormone and actually a, sp a special region of HCG. This interaction is possible, right? And this antibody FC region, 
is designed in mouse right so it's designed in normally in mouse so this is the structure of those antibodies that are placed in the r region of the strip now the second thing is t the antibody that is present in t region of the strip is also anti hcg antibody and is having the capability of binding with hcg but but there is having slight difference the antibodies that are present in the r region are having enzymes attached with it so this is the type of antibody that we present in r but in t region though we are having anti hcg antibody these are also anti hcg antibodies but they are not attached or bound to any enzyme right because remember in all these reactions we need to deliver the output for delivering it the best way to use an enzyme substrate reaction to give a color right so this antibody that are present in r are anti hcg having enzyme bound to it but the antibodies that are present in t region are simply anti hcg antibody do not have any enzyme but in t region we are having many of this anti hcg antibody along with a dye right along with a small let's say these are the dye so this thing is present in the t region right so if you look at the r region thing this is present in r this is present in t now what present in control in control region there is another presence of presence of another type of antibody those are anti mouse antibody now remember the fc portion of all the, all of this antibody that are present in r and t are generated in mouse so the antibody that are present in c or control region tend to bind with this fc portion of this antibody that are present in r and t right because this antibody that are present in c region are anti mouse antibody so the final type of antibody these are anti mouse antibody and also in the c region we are also having some dye some dye right so this is what we are seeing in the c region so these are the three regions and three different varieties of antibody mixtures are placed now what is the principle once we put uh, urine there with the hcg now suppose there is the presence of hcg so let's say there is a positive confirmation of pregnancy so if i look at the positive results the presence of hcg is there now what will happen once we put it into the sample loading area capillary action will draw it towards this direction let me take the other color capillary action will draw it to this direction right so once this hcg is moving along with the urine it reaches the r region right remember r region contains the antibody anti hcg antibody so the hcg molecules will bound with this r uh, this this anti hcg antibody in the r region right so they are bound now right then what will happen after the binding is done they will washed out remember that's a very important stage so actually the all the antibody that are present in r after binding with hcg they are washed out and they are also carried so anti hcg antibody is now being carried up from this r region towards the t region now remember in the t region we are ha also having anti hcg antibody so in this region what we are going to see that they are having this anti hcg antibody along with the dye so what it will be doing here remember so this is the antibody that we are finding along with the dye right so dye is present this is happening in the t region and those antibody that is coming from the r region remember because those antibodies are being washed out so though and those antibodies that are coming it will look like this along with this hcg right so now the antibody from r region bound, bound with hcg will come and been attached with the antibody that are present in the t remember because both the antibody present in t and r are anti hcg so they kind of form a sandwich like structure having the hcg in the middle now remember the antibodies that are coming along with the wash they are having enzymes attached to it right and there is the presence of dye in the test region so the enzyme along with the dye so blue dye here along with the dye work together and it is giving us 
the dye is break down it is broken down into a particular color actually it's a pink color so it will give a pink coloration so pink coloration will be observed there okay and then once it is done again it is moving along with this process so once it is moving so rest of them uh, are done and and those antibody or those uh, antibody coming from r which is not bound with this t region are also being washed away so they are washed away and they are going towards the c region now remember c region there is anti mouse antibody and now there will be this r antibody of the r region bound with hcg right so in this region this r antibody so the fc portion of the r antibody will be targeted by the anti mouse antibody because this this antibody is of r anti region generated in mouse so so the fc portion is fragile to bound with the this antibody in c so the antibody along with the fab portion will bind with the fc region of the r antibody which is washed here and then the dye will be there it it will give us a coloration so the coloration it will give again another pink coloration so ultimately if there is a presence of hcg in the urine it will give two color or two bands in the strip one for the test one for the control right now what happens if there is no hcg in the sample in that case in that case same thing begins sample is loaded it is being carried and once it reaches this r region so no hcg is there no hcg is there so no hcg is bound with this r region or antibody present in r region right so r region antibody are free from any hcg so again those antibodies are being washed out and it reaches the t region remember so now the now what situation arises we are at this t terminal and we are also getting antibody from r so these are the r antibodies remember but there is no hcg present so as there is no hcg present there won't be formation of any sandwich like structure that we have seen in before so in this case there will be no attachment of the r antibodies with the t antibodies via hcg so no attachment so ultimately it will also be washed through this region so no dye precipitation will be seen no band will be seen in the test right because the only way it will show the band if there is a contact of r antibody and t antibody via the presence of hcg in between them right then then only the enzyme will break down the dye and it will give the pink color but in this case though it is carrying though the r antibody is carrying the enzyme but there is nothing to attach or to conduct the signal as a result there won't be any activity of enzyme substrate and as a result there will be no band now then what happens again this region of the t antibodies are again washed out and it ultimately reaches the c region so once they are reaching in the c region there is this uh, this antibody that are present in c anti mouse the principle will be the same just like the previous because with the ab region of the c region antibody will bound with the fc portion of this r antibody as a result the dye will be precipitated and we will see a color in the c region right so if there is an hcg in minus it will give only one band so if the patient is hcg plus it will give two bands so two band will confirm the presence of hcg in the urine so it confirms the pregnancy one band is not uh, confirming the pregnancy but remember the presence of the control band is very very important because if there is no no precipitation or no line in seen in the control region that means the strip is not working because if the strip is working we will always end up with a band in the control region right because that's how the process is developed it's not only important to check that whether uh, it is hcg positive or negative but also it is we need to make sure it, we need to check that whether the strip is working or not if the strip works fine then obviously you'll see a bond at least one band in the c region right but if there is hcg positive we are going to see two bands because one for uh, the sandwich structure formation another for the anti mouse interaction right so that's how 
actually pregnancy test works and remember the presence of uh, this this whole process is kind of very crude way of determining obviously the presence of hcg in blood is the best way to go but actually the pregnancy test kits that are available normally kind of 95 or above 95 percent to 98 percent sure so it is kind of good test because the presence of hcg in high concentration or, or, or in urine definitely shows uh, the presence of pregnancy so that's the need uh, pregnancy test guys thank you